Hey, wake up. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joe Alton, MD of Survival Top 50's Reader's Choice website, doomandbloom.net, with over a thousand articles, podcasts, and videos on medical preparedness. Together with my wife, Amy Alden, an advanced registered nurse practitioner, we're the authors of the Book Excellence First Place Winner in Medicine, The Survival Medicine Handbook, now in its 700-page third edition. The brand new book, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, The Layman's Guide to Available Antibacterials in Austere Settings, and the designers of an entire line of medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. Long ago, one of my first articles about preparedness was on expiration dates. What are they and what do they mean for the average person who has a medicine that is no longer fresh? You'll read all sorts of stuff about how dangerous drugs become once they pass the magical date on the bottle, but what actually does happen? Does it still work? Does it become poisonous? Do you grow a horn in the middle of your forehead? Before I start, I want people to know that in normal times, Yes, you should definitely use drugs that aren't expired and call your healthcare provider to refill them as prescribed. My focus, however, is medical preparedness for major disasters and long-term survival. Well, that's a whole different ballgame, and throwing away medicine as soon as it expires may leave you without a means of curing infections if you're thrown off the grid. What are expiration dates? Expiration dates were first mandated in the U.S. in 1979, and they represent the last day that a pharmaceutical company will guarantee that their drug is at 100% strength, something we call potency. In the grand majority of cases, these medicines do not become toxic after the expiration date. They don't become poisonous, and if you take a pill the month after it expires, it's unlikely you turn green or grow feathers, unless you're a parrot, that is. In many cases, drugs in pill, powder, or capsule form will be 100% potent for years after their expiration date. Well, that's just outrageous, Dr. Bones. You're just an old country doctor. How can you say something like this? Because the government and the evidence agree. As a matter of fact, a recent article in Wilderness and Environmental Medicine, the Journal of the Wilderness Medical Society, of which I'm a member, tested several expired drugs in a remote environment, out at sea as a matter of fact, and found them, even though they were stored at high temperatures, to be safe and effective. So there's more and more evidence of this over, over time. Now, how did we figure this out? Well, the U.S. has a national emergency medical response, and the Department of Defense and other federal agencies stockpile millions of doses of various medicines used in emergency settings. In the past, when those drugs expired, they revved up the forklifts and threw out tens of millions of dollars worth of drugs. Well, as you can imagine, this gets to be pretty expensive. So a study was performed called the Shelf Life Extension Program, SLEP, something that I first wrote about very many years ago, actually. This program tested 122 drugs used in emergency settings and found that most medicines, as long as they're in pill or capsule form, were still effective after their expiration dates, sometimes for years. As such, I recommend not throwing them away, but instead making them part of your survival medical storage. Longevity of a drug, by the way, was not the case if in liquid form. These lost potency quickly after their expiration dates, so are not useful for long-term survival settings. This includes insulin, pediatric antibiotic elixirs, and others. A notable exception was expired EpiPens. Studies found that most retain some potency even three years or four years after their expiration date, some up to 80%. The manufacturer even states that if you have an EpiPen, and that's all you have, and it's expired, you should use it, but be aware that it may not be as effective. You may need an additional dose. The government didn't change their system as a result of the bombshell shelf life extension program data, and there are still expiration dates on your medicine bottles. What the authorities do instead is put out what are called emergency use authorizations for certain drugs as needed. Under Section 564 of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, the FDA may allow unapproved, such as expired, medical products or unapproved uses of approved medical products when there are no adequate approved or available alternatives. So they gave a five-year extension for the antiviral drug Tamiflu during the 2009 swine flu epidemic. They also proclaimed an emergency use authorization for the antibiotic doxycycline a few years ago because of concerns about anthrax. 
Despite this, you're going to see reports that say that all medicines are dangerous when expired should be tossed. These opinions are perfectly reasonable in normal times, but if you're watching this video, you're probably concerned about the future. You might even be the person that would end up medically responsible in situations where help is not on the way. You're exactly who I want to talk to. If a true long-term disaster occurs, you may one day have to make a decision about whether or not to use an expired medication. Let's say a loved one is fading from an infection, you're off the grid, something bad has happened, and there's little or no hope of getting to modern medical care. You have an expired bottle of antibiotics. Are you going to use the expired drug to save a life? That's your call, but I know what I'd do. Years ago, I suggested on this very channel that in a true disaster, the issues that face the medically responsible will be very basic. What is the problem? Do I have medicine that will treat it? Could this medicine, although it has expired, possibly save a life? When it comes down to it, can you really choose to not use it because it may possibly have side effects or maybe not be as strong? Let's hope it never gets to that, but you have to look at it from a survival mindset. Hoping for the best while preparing for the worst isn't a bad strategy to deal with the uncertain future. This is Joe Alden, MD, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Find out more about establishing a proper sick room and survival scenarios by checking out our new book, Alden's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease. And hey, don't forget to fill those holes in your medical storage by checking out Nurse Amy's entire line of medical kits, books, and more at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.